That's where we find 12 News reporter Rose Devayan. She's there this morning with the details. Good morning, Rose. Good morning, DeMarco. Well, what began as a joyful party to celebrate a girl's 15th birthday ended up in a brawl and left one person shot by police now recovering in the hospital. Now here is what we know. More than 100 people were at the quinceanera party here at the Ramada Inn. Actually, when we got here, it was so cold. I had to put on this extra coat and it was drizzling just a little bit. But as you can see now, I can barely open my eyes because the sun is directly shining in my face and it feels great. Hey, good morning, guys. Well, this idea for flag planting began seven years ago when a local hardware store owner named Jim Rosman stepped out of his house on the 4th of July and looked around and saw that nobody had any flags on their lawn. So what he did was to buy a thousand flags, went around the neighborhood and started planting them. Mm -hmm. Hi, Portia. Hi, DeMarco. Yes, a special bird here at the State Fair to teach us more about the raptor program and that some of these birds are endangered species. Good morning, Portia. Well, Germantown is a very quiet place. Terry Wisolowski's case has been open for six years, and it remains the only unsolved murder in this town. Not a quarter. Yes, I'm being a hundred dollar bill down here. Not a quarter. Any fine, not a bit, but a fine, not a half a dollar bill there. Not seventy fine, not a bit, then fine, but a fine, 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 one seventy five. <laughs> well, that's Johnny. He's going to be starting the auction around 9 o'clock. Of course, I can't talk as quickly as he can, but he surely is going to sell a lot of things here, and we're looking forward to listening to him some more. Live out here in Wauwatosa, Rose Dubai at WISN 12 News. You just killed the Marco. <laughs> Good morning, Portia. Well, police are trying to move that case quickly. The next step is the lineup, which could possibly happen as early as this morning. They want to know if the man that they caught yesterday is the same man responsible for robbing over 20 businesses and also small restaurants. Now, after a long chase that ended here at 21st and Lapham, the suspect crashed into a row of parked vehicles and a police squad car. And then he didn't stop even at the intersection for any of the cars. He just went flying right through it. Get out. And I see the car like, boom, you know, like a, like a bumblebee, you know. <laughs> well, that chase lasted 20 minutes. The suspects and the officers were slightly injured in the crash. The suspect was treated on the scene before he was arrested. The officers are fine. Police now believe that the 36-year-old man could be the serial robber that they are looking for. After a robbery early Wednesday morning, police got a description of a car and spotted it driving in this neighborhood. Now back out here live, you can see that several cars are damaged from that dramatic crash, a dramatic ending to a very long chase. Live out here on Milwaukee's south side, Rose Tobian, WISN 12 News. A 12-year-old boy who admitted sexually assaulting a four-year-old girl at a local YMCA learned his fate in court today. The crime was caught on tape. Only on 12 News, reporter Rose Tobian tells us it was a sad and difficult case for the victim, the perpetrator, their families, as well as the juvenile legal system. It was here at the Parklawn YMCA where a 12-year-old boy sexually assaulted a 4-year-old girl in January. The assaults were caught on four digital security cameras. Watch closely as the young perpetrator, seen here wearing a red jersey and white sneakers, enters a weight room. He is followed by the four-year-old victim, who is wearing red pants. We have enlarged the images to keep the children's identities private. The four-year-old girl was here on that day, participating in a day program with her brother. She says she never met that 12-year-old boy before. The boy was charged with battery, sexual assault, and exposing himself in a public place. He pled guilty to the sexual assault charge and has since been in the custody of the state. At his disposition hearing today, Assistant DA Lori Kornblum asked Judge Borowski to send the boy to a juvenile detention center. The fact that the victim was a stranger, the fact that he um, acted very aggressively, um, I felt that he's a danger to the public. But the boy has no prior record. He's 12 years old. I, I mean, I, I wish people would think back to when they were 12 years old. Um, I don't know very many children who are 12 years old and who are not vulnerable. For now, Judge Borowski is sending the boy to Nora's residential center, where he will undergo close supervision and a sexual treatment program. He's also been ordered to write a letter of apology to the mother of his small victim. In Wauwatosa, Rose Tobian, WISN 12 News. Whoever killed 22-year-old Terry Wesolowski is still on the loose after six years. But as 12 News reporter Rose Tobian shows us, police hope new technology and time will lead to a suspect.
Every year on May 28th, Germantown police print fresh posters of Terry Wesolowski. She is the victim in their only unsolved murder case. Her parents, Renee and Frank, make the annual trek to the police station so people won't forget about her. It's been six years since Terry died, but the pain of losing their only daughter remains fresh. Some days are real good, some days are real bad. Um, it's just a day by day type thing. Um, with her love of life, she would want us to go on, so that's what we do. Terry was stabbed to death along Bunsen Drive, about a block from where she worked. This is where Terry worked second shift running a machine. She left the factory at 11 o'clock that night and her body was found six hours later. Detective Michael Yogurst believes that Terry knew her killer well. As the relationship developed, something went wrong in the relationship. Uh, at this point, we, we, we don't know what, but something went wrong and, and it developed into a situation where uh, she was murdered. Every year, Terry's family and friends light candles to keep her memory alive. Meanwhile, her father continues to probe for answers. I still try and talk to people, you know, if they've heard anything or whatever, you know. Uh, uh, we've had a uh, couple neighbors come by and, you know, ask questions and stuff like that. So I sort of probe on it a little bit. Investigators are confident that they will someday arrest Terry's killer. There are high-tech DNA advances, and the passage of time may have convinced reluctant witnesses that they now need to come forward. In Germantown, Rose Tobian, WISN 12 News. Don't forget the cheese. That's where <laughs> Rose Tobian is this morning. Good morning, Rose. Hi, good morning to Marco and Portia. And we have to say it carefully. We have to say slice the cheese and not use that C word that uh, <laughs> so many people use. And it means a totally different thing. But this is a great event. However, <laughs> it doesn't start for four more hours. But as you can see here, they are almost finished setting up, just waiting for the vendors to get here. This began last year originally as a way to sell leftover cheese from a cheese conference and last year they had 10 or so vendors and this year they've grown four times that size with about 40 vendors and I have the event manager here with me Jenna Smith good morning good morning you brought some uh, specimens here with us uh, for us yes yeah, specimens tell us about this block of cheese here certainly this is one of the cheeses that will be sampled here today this is one quarter of a 180 pound Emmentaler Swiss cheese wow. that will be here mm -hmm. And um, it is made, uh, it's a Wisconsin cheese maker. He also will be here, Bruce Workman. And so people can come on down and try this fantastic cheese. Okay, and we will sample that a little bit later. And then you brought this other block of cheese. Tell us about this one. Absolutely. This is um, part of what was a 60 pound cheddar. This is one of the cheeses that was actually judged at the American Cheese Society Conference in Louisville, Kentucky. You can see yeah, some see of the marks. There. Tell us about that. Yeah, there's, um, there's holes. This is where it was judged. They actually core through the cheese and then uh, taste for texture, flavor, and some of those plugs are actually replaced on the top to, um, to, to keep the integrity of the cheese. But then this one actually did go through that mm -hmm. judging, and we'll be cutting that up and selling it later today. Okay, let's taste a little bit of that. Absolutely. Very large. Haven't cheese. had breakfast, so this is great. You don't mind my finger? Not at all. Thank you. Mmm, made in Wisconsin. Oh, that's fabulous. It's a wonderful cheese. Mmm, thank you so much. Oh, we have another block of cheese here for Portia and DeMarco. This is for Portia and DeMarco, and this is great cheese. And um, our intern, Jeff, here is going to demonstrate how to use this cheese. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, and just so you know, along with this fabulous cheese to be had, oh. there are many other locally Wisconsin-made products, and we'll have some of that a little bit later on in the newscast for you. Live out here on Brady Street, Rest of My and WISN. Oh. It's 7.08, and you have already started. Right? Yeah, I know. Oh. Okay. All right, thanks, Cheesehead.